Our last two problems in this video are ones for you to try. The first one incorporates some ideas that we saw in a recent example. The second one also incorporates some of the uh, more recent examples we've been working on. It's maybe a little bit trickier, so I'll throw these little stars there. So, pause the video, work through these problems, and then come back to the video and we will go through the answers. The first equation, it would be a mistake to split it up because we don't have it equal to zero. When it looks like this, one side factored but not equal to zero, we will actually have to multiply this side all out, see our terms so that we can take this negative two from the right side over to the left side. So for this problem, I start by doing FOIL, x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 10 some like terms in the middle, x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals negative 2. Then I could add 2 to both sides, essentially bring that negative 2 over to the left side. In standard form, it's become x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Now we can go and factor it and, and start, headed, start heading towards our answer. So a nice trinomial to factor, x plus 3 times x plus 4, and these parts will split into two separate equations. x plus 3 equals 0 will lead us to x equals negative 3. x plus 4 equals 0 leads us to x equals negative 4, and there is our solution set. This problem, I'm taking the approach that our terms should be together on one side equal to zero. I don't have any sets of parentheses, any multiplying out I have to do, just have to work to collect the terms together on one side. So I'll move 75x over to the left side where it's going to be minus 75x. The terms are in descending order, they equal zero, it's time to factor. And just keep in mind, what are the things we need to do when it comes to factoring? First, look for the GCF. There is a 3x we can divide out front of parentheses, with x squared minus 25 left inside. This binomial we can factor first. It's a difference of squares. It's factored as x plus 5 times x minus 5. Here it is written out in factored form. Next is split these up. We're using the zero factor, zero product rule. These parts all multiply together equal zero. So individually we could say they equal zero. But what are the parts that we're splitting up? It's not just two parts this time. We have three separate parts to split up into three separate equations. That's what, that's what made me want to write those little stars there. I think it's just a tiny bit different because of this reason but it doesn't stray too far from the steps we've been working with so far. Just be cautious about when there's a GCF. Think about, does that lead us to an answer? 3x equals 0 definitely leads us to our first solution, x equals 0. And you can see, plugging a 0 in place of x would make our equation true. Second part, x plus 5 equals 0, leads us to our second solution, x equals negative 5. Let's get some organization there. The third part, x minus 5 equals 0. Add 5, both sides, leads us to our third solution, x equals 5. And this solution set, we actually have three answers, x equals 0, 5, and negative 5. 